بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله تعالى وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد Respected brothers and sisters So this is the second um, episode of a small series focusing on how we can uh, how we can go through all of the experiences of Ramadan collectively as families right and we spoke uh, already about how we can prepare for Ramadan uh, in the, you know, like in, in the social aspects of Ramadan, how we can prepare together as families, not as individuals. You know, father earns the money, does the shopping, brings it home, or father earns the money, mum and dad do the shopping, bring it home, and then no involvement of the children in any of that. So we do a lot of preparation for Ramadan of a physical nature, etc but we don't involve the whole family so we need to involve the family in that aspect as well so we've had an episode about that today i want to talk about how we can commit as a family to the ibadah aspect of ramadan to the worship aspect of uh, ramadan uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has created us for his worship obviously the worship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a is a is a broad concept of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one, and then secondly, doing everything that we do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that intention makes um, ordinary, everyday activities um, acts of worship. And then if, if, if within that there is anything that Allah has commanded, His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has commanded, then that becomes a more direct act of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and therefore it is an act of worship. So for example, we all understand salah, you know, or, or namaz, whatever you want to call it, is an act of worship. We all understand that doing tasbih uh, or doing dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an act of worship. Or doing salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or durood sharif is an act of worship, etc. So we, we all identify and understand that these are acts of worship. But similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to be good to our parents. So this is not, you know, worship in the conventional sense, but it is an act of worship. Because Allah commands it, we submit to it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, um, uh, you know, to be good to our relatives and family members, right? So Allah says, Wa bil ihsanan wa bil qurba. Be good to your parents, be good to your relatives, right? So that when we do it, not for ourselves, not to have a big family, not to have unity so that, you know, so that we can be proud of being a big family, etc. But because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands it, then that becomes an act of worship, right? And in that way, helping the poor is an act of worship. And in that way, um, being good to our neighbors is an act of worship because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa commanded that. In that way, um, you know, generally spreading good. And I spoke in the previous episode about feeding people is an act of worship because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa encouraged it. And obviously, you know, our intention and our motivation and the sincerity from our hearts to do things, even things that we would have done anyway, but to say, no, even though I would have done this anyway, I won't do this for myself, but I will do this for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then it t becomes a, a, a selfish personal act becomes an act of submission to Allah and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of this is worship in the broadest sense, right? But at the same time, there's what I call them vertical acts of worship. Acts of worship that, are, that directly involve us in, a, in some sort of direct dialogue, some sort of direct interaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are known as uh, ritual, acts of ritual worship, right? And these are, you know, like, these are important in Islam. And you can tell how important they are because, for example, we all know the five pillars of Islam, right? And we have, the first one is the shahada, is to become a Muslim. But then the remaining four of the five pillars of Islam are all ritual acts of worship. Direct acts of worship done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These have no, you know, all right, so sometimes they have wider benefit, right? But they are very directly commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah demands them as acts of worship, right? Um, and the, the most important is the most ritual, the one that is completely between us and Allah. So five times salah, right? 
So Iqamatu Salah, first and most important of the remaining four pillars, right? Then you've got fasting the month of Ramadan, right? Um, then you've got the, the, uh, the Zakah, then you've got the Hajj. Of these, the most virtuous is, is Salah. Then you've got fasting the month of Ramadan. These are almost entirely personal, meaning it's inside me. My Salah is between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody else is involved. My salah doesn't give anybody else money. My salah doesn't give anybody else food. My salah doesn't give anybody else shelter. My salah doesn't give anybody anything. Yes, spiritually, my salah might bring the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala down. My salah might bring rain from the sky. You know, my salah might, might, might result in somebody's punishment in the grave being relieved. Uh, the dua I make in my salah might, might, bring, might bring good to me and to my family. But the act itself is between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fasting is between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These, the, these are the most, also these are the most regular of our acts of worship. Salah, we do five times a day and then we have lots of nawafil. Fasting in the month of Ramadan is once a year, but then there's lots of nawafil or nafal fasts that impact us the rest of the year, right? Monday, Thursday, three days every month, in the middle of the month, three days, any part of the month, um, Ashura, uh, you know the 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 the, the, the days the first ten days of uh, uh, of of, of the Hajj and etc etc etc. All there are so many nafal. You know fasting the fast of Dawood alayhi salam. You know fast one one day miss one day fast one day miss one day. This is one of the sunnas uh, of Dawood alayhi salam. The Prophet alayhi salatu salam said this is the best form of fasting and so on and so forth. Impacts us in multiple ways throughout the year. Zakah once a year and now we move into an act of worship that benefits other people hajj also very ritual but has some benefits associated with other people so were acts of worship between us and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are critical in the month of ramadan right and and these are absolutely critical to our salvation because they are the most sincere of our ibadah and they establish our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they, they symbolize our iman. They symbolize our iman. And I, what very, you understand this very simply. When you give charity or feed somebody, then that is something a non-Muslim can do, right? A non-Muslim can give charity, a non-Muslim can feed somebody. When you, when you uh, are hospitable to someone, which is a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa very virtuous act, to let somebody stay in your home who doesn't have anywhere to stay. Anybody can do that. A non-Muslim can do that, right? But salah, ibadah, dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tilawah of the Quran, only a Muslim can do, right? These things are exclusive, exclusively attached to our iman. That's why these are our most important, these are our most pivotal and most central acts of worship. Ramadan, you know, we've spoken about the, the wider aspects of Ramadan, the helping our neighbors, the feeding our neighbors, the feeding our homeless. But now we are talking about the center, the core, the heart of Ramadan. This we must increase, right? And we must prepare to increase, right? You know, uh, find the motivation, right? You know, I, I briefly mentioned this before, but now if you don't pray, pray five times a day. If you don't pray five times a day, there is no excuse in the month of Ramadan. Not praying one of our salahs is a major, major, major sin, right? Any sin we commit, we get once, we, it gets recorded as one. If you do a good deed, it gets recorded ten times, normally. But if you commit a sin at a time of great blessing, or at a, at a place of great blessing, like committing a sin in the month of Ramadan, and committing a sin in Hajj, in Umrah, right, in Mecca, Medina, then although it still gets written as one, it, it grows in gravity. Imagine, imagine, like, imagine something that remains one, but increases in weight, right? It's still one, but its weight is increasing. The seriousness increases, right? So it's not a quantitative increase, it is a qualitative increase. So missing a, you know, missing a salah is a, Terrible sin outside of Ramadan. In Ramadan, it grows even further, right? It's heavier, right? So if we're not performing salah in the month of Ramadan, 
Start performing salah, all five salahs in the month of Ramadan with the intention, not just perform all five, but with the intention to continue outside. If your children are not performing salah, uh, you know, then teach them the same lesson. You know what, however it's been outside of Ramadan, we can't, you know, we can't miss inside Ramadan, right? If you perform salah um, at home only and on your own, right, outside of Ramadan, in Ramadan, perform it in congregation. Husband, wife, children, come together, perform it in congregation. Colleagues at work, come together, perform in congregation. Students at university, come together, perform in congregation. Secondary school students at, uh, at school, come together, create a congregation, perform it together, right? And if you don't pray inside the masjid, go to the masjid. The congregation, you get 25 to 27 times more reward. You go to the masjid, every step to the masjid, you, you, you increase a hasana. Every step to the masjid, your sins are, are written away. You increase in rank, right? And then you get the reward for, the, for joining the imam, behind the imam in takbir. The reward for being on the first surf. The reward for being in, in the forward surf. The general reward for being in, a, in one of the houses of, in praying in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are all additional rewards for performing salah in the masjid. Most importantly, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized performing salah in the masjid for men so much that some ulama say it's wajib. Others say it is a sunnah mu'akkada on men to perform the, in the masjid. It's not sunnah mu'akkada for the women, but for the men it is a sunnah mu'akkada. That if a person continually neglects it out of laziness, they will be sinful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So if you've not been doing salah in the masjid outside of Ramadan, do salah in the masjid in Ramadan. Try to do all of them. If you can't, try to do the ones that you can when you're at home, when you're at work. It's break, it's, it's, you've got lunch break. Go to the nearest masjid, perform salah there, then have your lunch or have lunch before it. Start making these adjustments, brothers and sisters. Make these adjustments to elevate our worship in the month of Ramadan. Right? Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. Ramadan is the month in which the Qur'an was revealed. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he revised the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan with Jibreel. Whatever was revealed in the, whatever was re, is revealed in, in one year, it's revised in the month of Ramadan with Jibreel. Whatever is revealed in the second, in the next year, and in the next year, revised in Ramadan. Until in the final year, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa revised the Qur'an twice with Jibreel. Ramadan, is the month of the Qur'an and therefore increased recitation of the Qur'an. If you cannot recite the Qur'an and you've neglected it all this time, do you know what? Get somebody to teach you to recite the Qur'an well and make a target. I'm an adult, I can learn fast, you know, I've done a one month computing course and I've learnt it. I've done a one month um, design course and I've learnt design. I've done one month this, I've done one month that, I've done this course, I've done a driving. You know, we all know nowadays, especially, we all know how to learn in bite sized, small chunks and learn quickly. Well, if you don't know how to read the Quran, learn it now. Learn it with a good teacher who can teach you with tajweed and you will receive the reward of both reciting the Quran and seeking knowledge, one of the greatest acts of worship. You will be in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the whole Ramadan if you're learning Islam, if you're learning Quran, if you're learning some sort of knowledge, the whole Ramadan you're in the path of, in the path of knowledge because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, whoever, whoever goes out to seek knowledge, he, whoever goes out to learn and seek knowledge, he is in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for jihad until he returns. The angels, the, 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 the angels pray for the person who seeks knowledge. The fish in the sea uh, pray for the person who seeks knowledge. The angels put their wings down under the feet of the person who seeks knowledge. Imagine doing that in the month of Ramadan. You don't know how to read Quran, you learn it in the month of Ramadan. You don't know, you know, you don't know your masail of fasting, you, don't, you, you, you do it in the month of Ramadan. So this is, this, is, this is an important part of Ramadan, the Quran. Find your own way to engage. You can't, and if you can't even do that, read translation. Read translation, read tafsir of the Quran. Engage with the Quran in the month of Ramadan, brothers and sisters. All right? And I should have mentioned this before, you know, and now that I've mentioned the virtues of seeking knowledge, you, part of preparing for Ramadan is to know about Ramadan. So go and do this formally. Don't go to talks in the masjid and think you're going to learn. Nobody learns, f nobody learns and retains anything because they've gone to a bayan. If you want to learn and retain, go and learn with a teacher systematically. Go and do a course. Go and learn and do a course on the rules of Ramadan, right? On what is required to spiritually prepare yourself in the month of Ramadan, right? And you will, you will 
attain immense reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for seeking knowledge to prepare to worship Him. Okay? And this is the truest and most pure act of seeking knowledge. When the act of seeking knowledge is done so that you are better, you, so that you will become better at worshipping Allah. You will become better at establishing a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will be, become better at fulfilling the requirements of your deen. The next important thing to do in the month of Ramadan, brothers and sisters, is remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have no routine, every Muslim, man, woman and child, right, should have a routine of dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Morning, evening. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu dhkuru allaha dhikran kathira. O believers, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abundantly. Dhikran kathira, an abundant remembrance. Wa sabbihuhu bukratan wa asira. And, and glorify him and, and exalt him and declare his purity morning and evening. Morning and evening. And generally, wa dhkuru isma rabbika bukratan wa ashiyya. Remember the name of your Lord morning and evening and in many many places the em emphasis of morning and evening the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he taught us many adhkar many incantation many words of remembrance of allah many words of praise and of and of exaltation and of uh, you know and, and many many words of istighfar many words of salawat and etc etc and he and he himself practiced the morning and evening and he taught us to practice the morning and evening right where is, this, where is this in our daily routine, brothers and sisters? If it's not there, do it in the month of Ramadan. Get a book, pick up Hisnul Muslim, it will give you adhkar of the morning, adhkar of the evening. In the month of Ramadan, pray Fajr in the masjid. Then sit down for another 15 minutes, read adhkar of the morning. Pray Asr in the masjid. That, or, or, you know, if you can't pray Asr in, 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 in the masjid and you end up praying it at home or at work, then afterwards take 10 minutes, read the adhkar of the evening. Right? Make a dhikr routine. The recitation of the Qur'an comes under the overall umbrella of dhikr and it is the highest form of dhikr. So first on top is your recitation of the Qur'an as the greatest form of dhikr, then 10 minutes after Fajr, 10 minutes after Asr. If you can't do it immediately after, then sometime in the morning. If you can't do it immediately after Asr, then sometime in the evening. Do those adhkar, alright? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to uh, he used to encourage saying Subhanallah walhamdulillahi wa la ilaha illallah wa allahu akbar a hundred times and he said these are the purest of words these are the purest of words and there is immense reward in them he said anybody who says raditu billahi rabba I, I am pleased with Allah as a lord wa bil islam deena and with Islam as religion wa bil muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiya and with muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as, as, uh, as, uh, as a prophet then Anybody who says this three times in the morning, three times in the evening, if Allah makes it a duty upon himself to, to make that person happy on the Day of Judgment. Th simple words. Raditu billahi rabba wa bil islam deena wa bil muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiya. Three times in the morning, three times in the evening. Right? The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam taught us to say, you know, so many different words. Asbahna wa asbaha al mulku lillah wa alhamdulillah. Allahumma bika asbahna wa bika amsayna. Sayyidul istighfar morning and evening. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta. Hasbi Allahu la ilaha illahu. Seven times in the morning, seven times in. All of these adhkar, brothers and sisters, read them. Read them every single day, morning and evening. If you haven't been doing it before Ramadan, okay. Make the plan for Ramadan. After Fajr, I'm going to prepare the adhkar from before. Buy the book. Hisnul Muslim morning adhkar, you know, evening adhkar. You can get all of this stuff online even nowadays for free. You don't even have to buy the book. You can find it on your phones. All right, these books are available in various formats. They're available in app format, right? In so many different apps, right? Morning, evening adhkar, tilawa every day, okay? And then the, the most virtuous act during the day is fasting. The most virtuous act during the evening is tahajjud. Try to, you know, we will all sacrifice sleep for food in Ramadan, right? Why? Suhoor or Sahri. We're going to get up for Sahri. You know what? If you get up 15 minutes before, make wudu, do five minutes of salah, you've done the most virtuous nafal ibadah. Even if you just do two rakats in five minutes, right? You've just done tahajjud every single night by waking up 15 minutes earlier. 
Wake up half an hour earlier, now you've got enough time to do four rakats, maybe six rakats, six rakats. And the best is to do eight rakats of tahajjud. Doesn't matter how long the surah or how short the surah, just do it, right? If you have extra time and you can spend extra time, it's a Friday evening, a Saturday night, spend extra time, do longer recitation if you can, if you have longer a longer uh, surahs memorized. If not short surahs, keep it short, but do eight rakats of tahajjud every uh, single night. And finally, you know, make plans for charity in the month of Ramadan, right? Make plans for charity, how much you're going to give, who you're going to help. Be constructive and be direct. Don't just go online, right, and just put it out there in the charity void, you know? Who receives it, you don't know. Do that if you must, if you have no other way. But try to give direct charity to the poor. Find out if there's anybody among your relatives, among your, among your extended relatives, people connected to your village back home, people who you are directly connected to who need your support. They have greater right over you. Try to give them charity. Now, finally, brothers and sisters, this is, the, I, this is as important as everything else. Everything that I have said, right? Your fasting in the month of Ramadan, your daily salah, etc., etc., Get your family together. The, make it a family commitment. Talk to them now, before Ramadan, in the beginning of Ramadan. Say, guys, we're going to, we, you know, no TV in the month of Ramadan. No distractions in the month of Ramadan. Let's cut out, of the, let's cut out from the computer games. And we're going to perform every salah together. And then after Fajr, we're going to do dhikr uh, together. We're going to do tilawah of the Quran together. Get together. And then, and then maybe to keep the motivation going, once a day, once a day, sit down, pick up something like Riyadhul Salihin, like a translation of Riyadhul Salihin, right? Go to the chapter of Ramadan and the virtues of Ramadan, right? Read one or two hadiths every day at some point in the day. I don't know, it might be maybe 15, five minutes before iftar, right? Five minutes before iftar, read a hadith to keep the motivation going. Then spend two minutes of dua before iftar because dua is accepted before iftar together father raises hands makes dua let the children take it in turns right let the children make a dua and lead everybody in dua make it a family commitment to worship together eat together to pray to salah together to make tilawah of the quran together go to the masjid together do things together as a family don't you know it's not it's not about, oh, my beard is grey, I'm an old man, I have to do it, doesn't matter what the children do. Well then, like, what kind of, like, what kind of ibadah is that? What kind of selfish ibadah is that? What about the children? When are they going to start doing ibadah? If you've only started doing ibadah in your 50s, then you've made a mistake, may Allah forgive you. If I've started in my 40s, I've made a mistake, may Allah forgive me. But should I not want my children to start younger? So don't tell them, don't tell them off. Bring them in. Right? Bring them in, organize, talk, discuss, make a plan, bring them in, do it together. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you all the tawfiq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of, all, of our, all of our ibadah. Do it for Allah's sake. Keep, you, keep sincerity intact. I'll talk about that again, inshallah, some more. Keep our sincerity intact. Make sure that it is something that Allah will accept because we're doing it purely for Allah, not to show other people. And bring the family in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our Ramadan, make it fruitful, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to take inspiration from Ramadan to continue after Ramadan. Jazakumullah khairan, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.